911 Talk Podcast, Episode 64, for Monday, January 2nd, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Paddock Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Well, the new year is here, and it looks like we've made it through another holiday break. And now, it's time to get back to work. Before I left you hanging for the last 30 days, as I took my winter hiatus, There was a bit of news that was scheduled to hit January 1 regarding the state of Michigan and enterprise-based E911 requirements for MLTS PBX systems. You see, prior to the holidays, Michigan was well on track to becoming the 17th state to add MLTS legislation, and that was going to go into effect by the end of 2011. Now, in addition to compliance requirements, the Michigan Public Services Commission was going to be the first in the nation to attach penalties for non-compliance that would range from $500 to $5,000 for each offense. However, just before the holidays, a bill was introduced and passed that amended the legislation's effective date to December 31st, 2016. That gave businesses a five-year reprieve to become compliant. Now, I talked to several people in the industry as well as several customers that would have been impacted by this. And although I was asked several times over the holidays what my thoughts were, I pretty much declined to comment until I could digest the ramifications a little more completely. Now, at first, I have to admit I was a bit disappointed that the legislation was extended so far into the future. From an IT perspective, five years is like a lifetime. My immediate thought was, with next generation 911 rapidly being implemented around the country, just about the time that Michigan's laws go into effect, the next evolution of 911 would be common in many places. And that could make a brand new law effectively out of date before it even goes into effect. Now, I certainly can't condemn the Michigan Public Services Commission. After all, they did enact legislation, and that will address the problem. But what I would have liked to have seen, however, is immediate compliance for new systems, and then give a generous waiver for existing systems. You see, the fact of the matter is, most MLTS systems today already have the ability built in to provide at least zone-level granularity, if not station-level granularity with minimal external adjuncts. Now, based on that fact, you don't have to commit to an all or nothing on day one. Many states, in fact, do require immediate compliance for new systems after a particular date, but then allow a grandfather clause for systems that are already in place. Massachusetts took that input, for example, directly from the industry when they crafted their law a few years back. That legislation states that if the MLTS undergoes a significant upgrade, which would include a software upgrade, of 50% or more, then the enterprise must implement E911 compliancy with that upgrade. I think that what happened in Michigan was they basically ran out of time. The Michigan Public Services Commission opened up talks on the matter earlier this year in 2011, and perhaps they weren't prepared for the deluge of responses from both the public and the telecommunications industry. Even when telecom is your primary job description, E911 can certainly become difficult to understand if you've never taken the time to look at the inner workings. But for those of you that have, and I keep finding more and more of you each and every day, you'll have to agree that after understanding some of the basic principles of how E911 works, there really is no man behind the curtain and you don't need flying monkeys to make a solution work, as a good friend of mine commonly puts it. Part of the problem is that a few companies out there have carved out an entire industry based on certain fears and uncertainties around E911. Several others, myself included, feel that education is the key to a successful E911 deployment. Effective E911 management today can mean a zone-based approach with static ELIN and ALI records and on-site notification indicating to local first responders the exact location of the caller on a map. I've talked to public safety. They're really not interested in cube 3W239. They don't know where that is, and they don't carry floor plans to tell them where it is. Their concern is to get to the right building in the right town, especially when on-site personnel can further direct them when they arrive. Now, tomorrow, we'll build on today's technology and push that intelligent, contextually aware information directly to public safety via the ESI net and then directly into the hands of public safety responders. So to the Michigan Public Service Commission, thank you for passing a law that will ultimately save people's life in the enterprise. 
and I urge you to look at the requirements carefully prior to the legislation going live and consider amending those to be in alignment with the NINA MLTS model legislation and the upcoming NG911 standards and best practices. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911.